Hey guys, this is Steve Rosati. I'm checking in with you with Bass Musician Magazine, aka Steve the Bass Guy. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. Hit me up, let me know what you like, what you don't like. But anyway, today I am bringing to you M Bass Brooklyn Series. Ooh. This instrument is a joy to play. I love this instrument. It reminds me of an instrument I used to own from some of our buddies in Brooklyn who make an instrument very similar because this bass is an homage. It's called the Brooklyn Series for a reason. Who do we know that's out of Brooklyn? Federa, of course. So this bass has um, a lot of those elements that is, is paying homage to those guys. Vinny and Joey, they set the standard many years ago and they brought us so many awesome, beautiful instruments. Well, John has, has also jumped in with that and has kind of built this homage to them as well. And this bass hits the marks 10 out of 10. Um, I've been playing this bass for about a week. If you follow me on Facebook, you want to see my unboxing and a couple other little links that I did with it where I show just getting kind of used to it. The bass itself is awesome. It's got the low profile frets, vintage low pro profile, Indian rosewood fingerboard, quarter sawn maple neck, kind of a standard, but John still does it to his way and it, it feels awesome. It's that flat oval. Now, one of the things I like about, about builders who really know the instruments is that they, they know that the instrument, it, the sound starts at the nut. John knows that. And what he does, he made sure that there was a really nice brass bridge here. Or, yeah, brass bridge. Sorry, my bad. Brass nut. Um, the brass nut is, is really important, I find, that for that open string sound so that you have a uniformity between an open string and also your, your finger notes. Um, he uses the hip shot, bridge, uh, hip shot tuners and hip shot bridge. This is the A style hip shot bridge. This bass is a passive bass. So it does have the bigger cavity in case somebody ever wanted to put the preamp in there. This instrument is available. Uh, you can get this through M bass or a bass similar to this. This instrument can come with multiple pickups. This one, however, comes with one. And the story behind this from what John said to me was that this pickup was supposed to come as a set, and he only had one, and they were laying around the shop for a while. One day, he decided that he was going to put it into a bass, and voila, you have this instrument right here. Now, this the top on this is elm. It's Carpathian elm with a beautiful burl. The, the, the pickup is wired to a tone knob, tone slash volume. If you guys know the bass that I used to have, my Federa, which was a single-cut Anthony Jackson four-string, I had one knob. Uh, on that that was similar similar placing to this, but it was just it was just uh, pickup uh, Basically a tone knob This is beautiful to be able to dial this in get your volume The neck is awesome. It's at the nut. You're looking at 1.78 inch uh, millimeter spacing down here. You're looking at 19 millimeter spacing The body is swamp ash the neck joint is It's a bolt-on so here's the thing about this, though. This bolt-on is unique to John. John has worked this out, and it is, it is a really nice, stable connection. You still have the snappiness of a bolt-on neck, but you have that sustain of a single-cut neck through. Um, you know, I had this conversation with John because I asked him about that because my bass was a single-cut with the neck through. And Federa is definitely known for their neck throughs. Their bolt-ons are awesome, too, but their neck throughs are amazing. This bass has that same feel as my as my neck through because you have that that access to that top fret. All those top frets that you want to get to. The C string on this is very lively. There's there's no loss of tone. I've had a few basses where I've I've had a C string on them and uh, they get kind of lost in the pickup. This one is voiced perfectly for that. John makes an incredible bass. Um, I recommend you check out any of the M Bases line, whether you're looking at the Vintage, whether you're looking at any of his series, whether you're looking at the Brooklyn. The Brooklyn is by far my favorite. Um, I like all of them, though, but uh, this one is definitely my favorite. 
And I, you know, I'm gonna give you guys some some direct to the board recordings because remember, um, I know somebody said last time they they didn't want to hear the amp um, when I, when I record the Music Man, which I understand that that's cool because not everybody's using a Phil Jones bass amp, and you want to just hear direct to to the line. So I have a plan for doing that today. I'm gonna do it through a uh, through my iPad Pro. Uh, I'm gonna record it direct in. I uh, figured out a way to do it uh, to get a nice sound through uh, a couple couple different ways. So it's just going to be a line in. There will be no talking, so you don't have to worry about telling me to shut up because it will be just bass. So again, if anybody has any insight or they have any any fear, uh, feedback for me, uh, please you know follow me on Instagram, uh, Steve the Bass Guy, or on uh, YouTube. Send me a message. I'm on there. Uh, I'm also on uh, Facebook. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything I can improve because remember, this is a work in progress. It's all a work in progress. Um, I hope you enjoy the, the sound samples I'm going to give you. Uh, again, let me give you a, get another nice once over on the instrument. I do have some really awesome pictures coming your way as well. If you could get a look at that, let me show you the back of that headstock. Here's the front. It is a beautiful instrument. John has not let us down. All right, guys. Peace, love, and low notes. Thank you again. Steve the Bass Guy checking in from Bass Musician Magazine. Love you guys. Peace, love, and low notes.